G'day guys, and today Shorty and I are going to do the wash up for the cats. It was a interesting season, mate. Uh, probably about where we may have expected the cats to sort of finish up. Um, so we're going to do sort of a similar to access all area style, where we're just going to talk about a bit of a highlight, a low light, and a bit of a Christmas bonus, chopping block, and uh, up, down, or stagnate, and a mark or a rating. And uh, that will sort of be where it's going, mate. But uh, an exciting year and plenty of highlights. Uh, which one did you go with? Definitely, thanks, Damo. Yeah, I think uh, my highlight will be the qualifying final victory, mate. I think uh, it's always great to win a qualifying final. Even better to do it against Hawthorne. Even better doing such circumstances that were just unbelievable, really. I mean, you couldn't get much more nerve-wracking a situation, but uh, we got the job done. Came down the last kick of the night. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately. We couldn't go on with a much better free after that, but I think uh, definitely that was from a, I guess it was our best win of the year in a way. So, um, you know, not the best we played, but certainly to beat the arch enemy in a final. I think that was my highlight, mate. Yeah, very nice, mate. Pretty tough to beat that one. Uh, my highlights, uh, the record against top eight sides, and more in particular, I guess, our 17 wins up from, what did we win last year, mate? 10 or 11 last year, I think. Yeah, it was probably, yeah, 11 or something, yeah, not yeah, many. Yeah, so... Not enough, I should say. Sorry, mate? Not enough. <laughs> not enough. <laughs> no, so we went at least six better uh, this this time around, and just our brilliant record against top eight sides. I think we only lost to Sydney in the top eight, and we lost to them twice, mm -hmm. so that was the only only side we couldn't really muster up against. Uh, there may have been one other there, but... Uh, just our ability to switch it on when we're playing the best teams uh, was quite a feature and a highlight that I felt uh, deserved recognition. Yeah, very good, mate. I, I agree. Well, thank you. We'll move on to the season lowlights, though, and uh, you know there were a couple that sort of uh, maybe highlighted. Um, how, what did you see in terms of our lowlights? Yeah, I felt for me, I guess there was probably a few that were continual problems, and I... I guess an overriding low light could be the fact of our inability to correct them, but one to me that stood out was that inability for the second tier players to really take that next step. I think we entered the season knowing what most of our stars would do, like Salwood and Dangerfield, Hawkins, and you can rely on that back line. But just your likes of Motlop, Blitzarves, Caddy, Duncan, Guthrie to an extent, um, you know, even someone like maybe Smith, Stanley, when you really look into it, just those guys that we would have liked to maybe take that next step and just didn't. And, you know, you hope everyone takes the next step, but I really felt these guys could take it, and I thought it'd be now, and it just didn't happen. And at the end of the day, I think that definitely cost us on the big stage, that lack of firepower and leaving it to too few. And, uh, yeah, if we want to go any further than what we did this year, they will need to improve and, and actually take that step. So that was a low light for me, mate. Yeah, no, very nice. Spot on. I was pretty disappointed about that as well. So, <laughs> um, And, yeah, I mean, you sort of look at the highlight, mate. It's sort of the uh, opposite for my low light. Um, you know, the Sydney Swans in that prelim final just uh, absolutely blew us off the park. And the way we were beaten in a, a pretty important final, we were non-competitive. The game was done after 15 minutes and really it was just a, a matter of hope in the end. What really did made me so disappointed about it was we just knew what Dangerfield was going to do. We just knew what Sel was going to do. And then the rest was sort of, it was just daylight between them and the rest of the playing group. A um, couple of players played okay, but you know no one could really hold the hat high besides those two workhorses in the middle. And similar to what you sort of said, just being beaten in the same way we did in round six, Round, I think it was round 16, thereabouts when we played him at Simmons. I mean, it was, it was like I was watching a, a replay of a bit of deja vu. I was, yeah, it was you know, very upsetting to watch that and just see it unfold before our eyes and nothing we could do about it. And uh, not the way you want to end the season. No, nah, definitely not, mate. Uh, no good at all. Mm, absolutely. But uh, we'll move into a bit of the cash money side of things, mate. Uh, a bit of Christmas bonus time. Uh, who caught your eye? Who do you reckon uh, deserves a few extra uh, greenbacks for their Christmas? Yeah, well, no, we were, we were talking about this uh, off-air and probably there weren't a stack of guys who 
never really stood out because mainly we knew what we were going to get from a lot and they delivered and the ones that they we hoped would uh, step up as I really to do and that is normally where you give out the extra cash. <laughs> so I'm looking at an old time. I'm going to give it to Tom Watt again. You can even throw one into Harry Taylor. You can maybe give him a bit of a uh, about to do a holiday or something like that, just a elderly getaway or something. But uh, they're old timers, but they never cease to disappoint. They were fantastic. In particular, Lonigan. I think I probably thought coming in the season, he was a guy that could maybe drop off, uh, but he probably did the opposite. I didn't think he'd be playing as good a footy. I thought he'd be solid, maybe fall away, but he was fantastic. As was Taylor. The pair hardly conceded a goal. Um, if you look at the goal per game sort of average on their opponents they were as good as you really get um, as a pair so they were fantastic so uh, throw some cash there away mate good stuff I'm on your bandwagon too mate with the defenders uh, Lockie Henderson take a bow uh, he was absolutely brilliant uh, you know, Corey Enright was probably another one that came to mind but you almost it's almost a time where you just give a play that you know we know Dangerfield and Sell are on a few dollars and uh, Henderson won't be on heaps so uh, just his ability to, you know, step into the Geelong system and uh, really contribute each week was uh, quite a highlight. His uh, utmost courage was quite a, a feature as well throughout the season. Sometimes dumb courage against the Dockers, as we saw. But, uh, yeah, his ability to be very competitive, uh, reading the ball well in the air and using the ball pretty well, I thought um, he was an outstanding contributor throughout the, uh, the 22 games. Got a little bit injured towards the end of the year, but I felt, um, yeah, he was a, a very handy acquisition down back. Yes, definitely, mate. I didn't play him in the right spot in the prelim final, did they? No, nah, it was probably disappointing that he yeah, had that sort of lead into the final because he just uh, was out of form, wasn't he, and, and in the end out of position. So it was disappointing to not see his, um, what looked like potential Australian form come out in September, but that's the way it goes. Nature of the beast, eh? Uh, so we'll move on to uh, 2017. Uh, what do we? Where do we see the cats next year, mate? Do we see them going up? Do we see them going down, or around the same, stagnating? I think they'll probably stagnate, mate. I think. I mean, there's a few weaknesses there, but I don't see us falling off the cliff by any means. Um, we're certainly going to have to improve some of those areas, and that's where the up could come from, but. I would uh, imagine our expectation might be similar to what it was coming this year, so that top four-ish, maybe fifth or sixth sort of setup, because it's a tough comp, so it um, doesn't take much to fall away, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, good stuff, mate. I'm, I'm going to go with stagnating as well. It's uh, As you said, it's a very tight competition, and uh, stagnating can even mean being losing a few games extra this year, which can mean you finish up seventh. So, um, yeah. I've got to see yeah, stagnating. Um, I was leaning towards maybe down, but I, I reckon probably a stagnate. We've got, got another 12 months, another preseason under the belt of the guys and hopefully get a bit of cohesion, hopefully develop some better processes going inside 50 and, you know, how we, how we attack from there and, uh, possibly some inclusions, hopefully maybe, a Deledio, maybe a Tui, those have been some names thrown around, um, would be handy. But yeah, I would say around the mark, and we got what we expected this year, I suppose, which was top six. So yeah. I'd say around there. Yeah, very good. And we'll move. Oh, I forgot the chopping block, mate. I've already. No, I know, I know, I was going to mind you after we did the grade. I knew you couldn't forget it. Who have we got on the chopping block, mate? It's uh, sort of your segment of each show, but um, yeah, you can pick a player or pick a couple, whatever you reckon. Yeah, well, probably most. It's not going to come as a surprise. Eh? Most have probably been talked about at the moment with uh, trades and everything like that. So the Motlock, Vardy and Curse and all probably guys I would have put up for uh, that. And I think Mitch Clark comes into that too. Um, I think probably if I was... Going into this maybe a couple of weeks back without, you know, seeing all the trades and everything that they're actually discussing anyway, I probably would have said Motlop. I think he's got some currency. Um, I think he's still got the ability to be a very good player, but it's not going to be at Geelong. I think he's, he's just going to be stale at the Cats. I think whatever the reason is, he hasn't taken that next step. I can't see him taking it Geelong now. So 
I think it'd probably help him for a bit of a new environment, a fresh start, and it could help us by possibly getting us a good player or even getting us into that first round of the draft, which we're looking to do. So, um, you know, I think it could be a win-win, and I would say he would be my main man for the chopping block. Yeah, don't need so much more than that. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, some some big guys to uh, be looked at. You know, Clark and Vardy, probably guys that uh, certainly on the outer or may look for other opportunities elsewhere with uh, their injuries and prone to you know, not being able to get their body right. Um, yeah, look, I mean Billy Smets, but he's going to play next year. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's crazy how he gets so many opportunities, but. Yeah, um, that's yeah. I mean, you basically just ran through the players that they'd probably be thinking about trading or chopping. So, um, good stuff there. So, uh, yeah, we'll give them a grade, mate. Uh, how do you assess their season overall as a whole? Yeah, I'm going to give us a B plus. I think, mate. I mean, it was a pretty decent season. I mean, you got to consider we we did come from outside the eight to what was it, second on the ladder. Didn't go on with. Know what you always hope to when you get two home finals, but I think overall it was a pretty impressive season to make top four, to win a final against a quality side. I think you you don't take that most years, but it's a pretty pretty good guide. It's a it's a good result. You know you're among the best sides, and uh, I think a B plus is fair. You know it wouldn't be I wouldn't be giving them an A or anything like that because I felt. We were good enough to win the flag, but I think um, B plus is probably deserving. Yeah, nice, mate. I'm going to give him a B. I'm going to be a little bit harsher. I was thinking B plus, but I was like in between B and B plus. So <laughs> um, yeah. I'd say yeah, mainly the B with uh, losing those sort of three or four really easier games. You would like to say just not having sort of the. Oh, I guess the the mental attitude to be able to perform well, even though the opposition doesn't quite reflect where they are in comparison to other teams. So that was not great to see. And just the way we we finished up the year. I mean, I guess going into the season we expected top six. Uh, we got that. Got got top two. Um, I think we were optimistic that we could have reached top two, and we did. But uh, just the the falling of the way late in the season with that that uh, last game against Sydney was. Horribly disappointing and uh, reflective of recent finals we've played, but so ecstatic with what we achieved in that final against the Hawks. It was awesome to uh, get the win over the line there and uh, just obviously increase the win count and, and be basically one of the best teams in the competition. So, yeah, maybe I've been a bit harsh giving them a B actually because we're, you know, top two in the competition on the ladder, but uh, yeah, not, not quite good enough at the pointy end of the season. Yeah, no, that's very cool, mate. Nicely summed up, and uh, yeah, good work by you, mate. Uh, very nice work from you, Lloydo. Just uh, love your work each week, and uh, <laughs> Damo and Lloydo on the show here. So uh, that's the wash-up from Shorty and myself on the Cats, and uh, had a pretty good year, but couldn't quite deliver it in the end, and uh, hopefully some bigger and better things to come next season. And uh, good stuff on the reviews over the year, mate. Uh, Appreciate having you on the show, and been a great uh, right hand man, wingman, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, much planned over the summer, pal. Um, oh, I've got a goal kicking contest against uh, one of your work mates, so that'll be interesting. That's what I was looking for. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> looking for. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that'll be uh, probably making a hit onto YouTube whenever I somehow manage to find time. I don't even know how it's even going to be possible to work out work wise and stuff, but we'll, we'll make it happen, mate. I think and. Uh, That'll probably be the only thing between, yeah, sort of now and sort of start of next oh, year. He was, out, he was out practicing this afternoon, mate, putting them through from all angles. Was he? Yeah, he was. He had thought, footage and all. I thought yeah, he, it was dangerous stuff. I thought you said he couldn't kick. Well, mate, I, I don't know. I hadn't seen the bloke kick before, and he was putting them from everywhere. I'm done. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that's our uh, wash-up, guys. Uh, don't, feel free to give the video a like. Don't forget to share it around as well and uh, all that fancy stuff. Subscribe for more. That'd be great. Uh, and don't forget to, yeah, check out Dari Joe. He's got some videos happening. So <laughs> I'll just plug Dari Joe away there. So th thanks for hanging around, guys, and it's been a great year. And we'll catch you all next time.